Philippines outperforming analyst expectations and most of the region with a stellar third quarter growth. What can the Duterte administration do to capitalize on this momentum? Joining us tonight is Dr. Luis Dumlao, economist and dean of the Gokongwe School of Management at the Ateneo. Dr. Dumlao, good Hi. to have you with us again. How are you? Well, listen, stellar performance. I mean, you yes. certainly don't you know you don't disagree on that. But the question is, within that government target of 67 percent, where do you think it's going to end up? Oh, it's it's. I think it's it's it's, it's going to be uh, seven percent minimum. Right and on the band and even more? It's probably going to beat it. It's probably going to beat it. Uh, this is lots of uh, pleasant surprise in the agricultural sector. Uh, lots of people are projecting it to, to have a, a contraction. Uh, people have asked me before, what if it's just zero, just a minimum? Well, guess what? It's not zero. It's even positive and not even positive. It even accelerates the, uh, the, uh, the equilibrium growth. So it grows by... Uh, 2.9% instead of growing an equilibrium Negative point of one. one. Yeah. Now, that, you know, that's an unheralded lever here in terms yes. of the economy. But talk about a gaps in agriculture. How can the Duterte make sure it doesn't go back to the Aquino administration's flat growth you know, performance? People have asked, uh, well, we, we were talking before this, and you, you asked me, uh, how can it be sustained? Uh, back in my mind, I was thinking, how was it able to sustain such a negative, such so many negative growths for such a long period of time? Uh, so uh, the point being is that uh, uh, the equilibrium, if you let the agricultural sector be in itself without doing anything bad policy-wise, it is main, meant to grow by one and a half, two percent. Close so, to population is also. Close to population growth. So it's going to grow by itself without doing anything. The, the question was, but looking back, but that's the past, how was it able to sustain something that was negative? That was the, that's, the, that's the abnormal one. But, but because what we're doing right now, what we see right now, is just something that is back to normal. Well, let's look at the drivers. Beyond the sectors, you're also looking basically at growth predicated on robust government spending and mm -hmm. private consumption. Private consumption is up to 7.3%. Yes. And you're looking at a government by two record budgets in a row. This one, if it passes next year, $3.35 trillion. What can the government do to make sure it channels it equitably in those sectors of agriculture, industry, and services? Well, it's... Uh, for one thing, one thing's for sure. It's been the, the budget would say that it's been spending enough in the agriculture sector. It's just, it's just for some reason that there's something. It's, it's it's an elephant in the room that we wonder why what's going on with the agricultural sector. But now it's back to, to uh, where it was. Uh, everything's as well. It's uh, uh, in terms of growth, it is a an investing economy, not a consuming economy. It is very much consuming but it is very much even more. It's even more investing. Well, certainly one thing we didn't get to is the capital goods formation, which is up. But again, all good marks all around, all business humming, agriculture being a new lever. Mm -hmm. Dr. Dumnao, thank you so much for your insights. Look forward to having you again, especially when the fourth quarter results come out. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you.